Okay, I wanted to do a kind of a second testimony kind of video. My first testimony video I made on my channel was the first video I ever made. Uh, I was pretty nervous and I didn't realize how poor the audio was on that video. And so I wanted to just maybe do a little bit uh, better video of that testimony. Um, uh, how, I be how I became a born again Christian. I was born in uh, Ohio in 1990, um, and I live in Ohio right now. I've lived in Ohio my whole life. I have an identical twin brother and an older brother that's three years older than me, and uh, both my parents are still alive and in pretty good health, and all four of my grandparents are still alive. They're all four in their mid-80s. Uh, like I said, I was born in 1990, so I'm 27 years old. Um, and so just wanted to give a little background about myself um, I was not born in a religious family at all that's my immediate family my uh, parents um, took us to the Methodist Church when I was really young I can remember you know drawing on the program and stuff and that's about it maybe going to like little kid Sunday school and stuff but never really never really was religious at all my whole life um, definitely what you would call agnostic my family is agnostic uh, not atheist um, although my twin brother claims that he's an atheist and I think my older brother probably does too um, and I probably would have considered myself almost an atheist at one point in my life um, but uh, my parents are definitely what you call agnostic and which means you know there could be a God, maybe there is, maybe there's not, we don't know. <laughs> so, um, that's what I was born into. And when I got to be probably 12, 13 years old, we basically only went to church one day a year, and that was on Christmas Eve, to the Methodist Church, for like an a evening service on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and um, eventually my parents started uh, taking us to Hawaii uh, for our Christmas break, when I was in junior high and high school, kind of. Uh, we did that about three or four years in a row, and so for that time, I basically went to church never. And um, it's not that I disliked really going to church, it's just not something my family d ever did. And um, But anyways, I uh, met my wife in uh, 2007, and she was getting ready to graduate. She was a senior in high school, and I was a junior. And she comes from a, a family that's, she's been raised going to church her whole life, basically. Um, uh, whether it's a non-denominational church or I think even a Southern Baptist church she used to go to. And um, my wife was definitely um, a professing Christian. And um, she was uh, a lot different than most of the girls at my high school. Um, and I noticed that, and uh, I don't know why, but I was always really drawn to her because I really thought I could trust her, and uh, just because of how, how good of a person she was. And so we started dating when I was a junior, and um, we've been together ever since, actually. We got married in 2013. Um, so just a little bit about myself, like I said. Um, when I was a senior in high school, I decided that I was going to be a civil engineer. So I went to um, the Ohio State University. It took me five years because I commuted to school. I lived at my parents' house and commuted for all five years. And I uh, also worked two or three jobs at a time while I was going through college. And uh, during that time, I would go to church with my wife every once in a while, but most of the time I had to work on Sundays, so I never really went. And uh, But uh, once I graduated college, I uh, got a job with uh, as a civil engineer, and it was basically my, my dream job. I mean, it's what I'd worked for since high school, and um, and it's actually it's the job I have today, too. I, I really enjoy what I do. Uh, basically draw I draw up plans and design roads and culverts and that kind of stuff and uh, get to work on the computer and draw stuff on the computer it's a 
really fun job. And um, basically, when I was going to college, you know, being going to engineering school, you take a lot of uh, uh, you take a lot of soils classes. Um, and in the soils classes, they basically teach what's known as the geologic column, uh, which is a fancy word that evolutionists like to use to basically says that there's different layers of the earth and that um, scientifically proves that evolution is true and that the world is millions of years old and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of holes in that science uh, that I didn't know at the time. And I can even remember some of my professors uh, mocking uh, the flood as the Bible says that there was a flood. And um, so I basically um, wanted just to believe this stuff. Um, it was a lot easier to not believe in God than to believe in God. You know, a lot less uh, guilt and things just by believing you came from a monkey, I guess. <laughs> but if you really sat down and, and got it out of me, I, I didn't really believe that. I didn't really believe in evolution. Um, I've never seen a monkey give birth to a human being so um, evolution takes just as much faith as as believing in creation does um, so by coming out of college and then getting my job uh, you know my life was really good I got this job I had always wanted and um, have every we had every weekend off and uh, I went from working all the time basically either being in school or working a couple different you know minimum wage jobs basically um, to having just a 40 hour a week job and <laughs> having the weekends off so it was a big change for me and I should have been real happy but uh, something just I don't know if it was depression or what but I just never really was truly happy with it like I thought it would be and and then um, Shortly after that, after I got my job, I, me and my wife uh, got married. Actually, I graduated college on a f Friday. I got married... Oh, I'm sorry. I graduated college on a Friday, um, moved into an apartment on Saturday, that Saturday, and started my job on Monday. <laughs> so that was a very busy time in my life. That was in 2013. In July of 2013, a couple months later, me and my wife got married and she moved in with me in an apartment that we lived in. Um, almost a year later after that, in the spring of, of 2014, we bought our house and that's this house that I'm recording this video in. And it was, I mean, it's like our dream house, you know, at the time. And again, I should have been really happy, but still it just wasn't, just didn't feel quite right. And about a month or two after we bought our house, um, my wife totaled her car in a pretty serious car accident and uh, thankfully she was uh, not injured really at all didn't have to go to the hospital just uh, bruised um, and just really you know emotionally kind of shooken up but totaled her car and had to get a new vehicle and things but um, I didn't really know it at the time but that really shook me up and I really started thinking about death a lot and um, it made me mad that I didn't know what's going to happen when I die. And it made me even more mad that my wife was almost taken from me and, and I didn't know where she would go. And um, I think that kind of started kind of pestering me. And uh, so at this time, um, like I said, I, wasn't, I had all the, my weekends off. My wife was working in retail. And she had every other weekend she had to work. So basically every other Sunday we were going to church just down the road from our house to this uh, satanic rock music, new age, uh, new version, just horrible, horrible place. Just we didn't know any better, you know. And at the time, uh, I'm just kind of hating being there. I don't want to go to church. I think it's a waste of time. <laughs> and... Uh, at the time, I was listening to some really, really satanic, dark, disgusting rock music. And I mean really, really bad stuff. I mean about as, about as horrible as it gets. 
and uh, and it's amazing how that works because I started out as a teenager listening to like the Eagles and and uh, things like that, and it's just weird how that transitions just over over time to just really really hardcore satanic stuff, and um, so like I said, we were going to this church down the road from our house and. I wanted to leave it and I wanted to stop going to church. My father-in-law is like a deacon and now he's actually like an associate pastor of the church in the city near where I live. And um, I knew he would be very upset with me if I stopped going to church. And um, so, but I started, I just had made up my mind, you know, I'm an adult. I'm going to make this decision for myself. If I don't want to go to church anymore, I'm just not going to go. And something got a hold of me and just kind of told me, you know, you know, you're going to church, which, you know, you're supposed to be a Christian, and Christians supposedly have a book, you know, a Bible, <laughs> you know, why don't you try reading it? Why don't you, you don't even know what this book says, why are you just going to, you know, say you don't believe it? And um, I didn't want to be a hypocrite, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and get a Bible and I'm going to read it for myself. And then I'm going to quit going to church because I'm going to be able to read this and say, oh, I don't believe this, you know. So I'd made up my mind. I wasn't going to tell my wife about it. And I just uh, went out one day and bought this Bible right here. Went to the bookstore, went to Barnes & Noble and picked this book up off the shelf and uh, decided I was going to read through it and decide whether I believe it or not. And it was my choice. And if I wasn't going to believe it, I was going to stop going to church and stop being a hypocrite <laughs> and uh, and all that. So started reading through it and got really lost. Started reading in the Old Testament, got totally lost. Um, once I got into the book of Exodus, I mean, just could not follow it at all. And about ready to give up on it. And um, I found this guy on TV named Les Feldick, and he has a program called Through the Bible with Les Feldick. And uh, I really liked the way he taught the Bible. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try and follow along with this guy and see the way he teaches the Bible, if, uh, if it's something I can believe or not. And so I started studying along with him for a few programs. And after a while, I noticed something. And what I noticed was when he would uh, read a verse out of the Bible, it wouldn't match mine quite, you know, exactly the same, word for word. It wasn't word for word the same. But when the camera in the on the program would pan down to somebody in the audience's Bible, it would be word for word, I mean exactly what he what his what he was reading. So so I kinda paused the video and it just hit me, you know, it's like I closed my Bible and I looked at the spine and it says New Living Translation. And I kind of looked at that thing for a second and I thought, translation? But, you know, wait, yeah, why is there different versions of the Bible? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you hear these preachers, you know, standing in the pulpit and, oh, the Bible is God's Word. And it's like, well, which one? The New Living Translation or the King James Bible or the New International Version or, or what? which one's God's Word? You know, and uh, so I found out on his website that he uses a King James Bible. And so I uh, went onto YouTube and typed in, Where can I buy a good King James Bible? And oddly enough, I found this guy, uh, YouTube channel Husky394XP. And his name's Brian Dunlinger. And uh, he had a really nice video on uh, local church Bible publishers. So I went to their website and I bought two King James Bibles from them. One that was just a kind of a reading Bible and one note taker's Bible where you can write notes in it. And so basically two days a week my wife would have to work late and I would come home from work and for about an hour or two hours, sometimes even longer, I would go through the Bible with Les Feldick and uh, write notes in my note taker's Bible. And I did that for weeks and weeks. And like I said, never mentioned a word of this to my wife, and I, I really just wanted to decide, I really wanted to, to decide for myself and then explain to her what I'd found. Which, looking back, I wouldn't have done it that way, but um, I know everything happens for a reason, so. 
so um, I started studying through his program in the King James Bible, and uh, you know some of the stuff he would read, I was like, you know, that's kind of interesting. You know, what if that's true? You know, he would read verses about uh, Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ, you know, John chapter one verse one, you know, how Jesus Christ created, you know, the, he was there in the beginning, Genesis one one. I started thinking, you know, you know, evolution and stuff like that. You know, there's, it's just a, it's just a faith basically. You have to have faith to believe that stuff. But here's, you know, Christianity has a book that tells you how we got here, and. Um, I really enjoyed kind of studying through and for several months I studied through and eventually after a while I started to kind of grasp some, some of it and eventually I started to really hear the gospel really well you know really clearly and um, when I first realized that I was a sinner in God's eyes and that I had no chance of getting to heaven on my own and that I was going to go to hell um, I really believed it. I I thought I'm going to hell. You know, I'm you know, I have so many problems in my life and I'm doing so many things wrong and you know, God's not going to accept my my good works to to get me to heaven. And I would like to say that that's the day I got saved. But unfortunately, there was about a month that went by um where I would not accept I would not accept Jesus Christ as my savior because um, I did not want to admit that all these people around me were going to hell. And what I started learning from the Bible and uh, things, I started to think that even my wife wasn't truly saved. And um, people that know me um, know this, and I'm not afraid to admit it, I really, really hate confrontation. <laughs> And if I can avoid a confrontation with somebody, I will do anything I can to avoid it. And I didn't want the confrontation of telling my parents that they were lost and going to hell. And I didn't want to have to tell my wife that I didn't think she was truly a Christian. And um, that just made me angry. And so for about a month, um, I was just walking around knowing that if I died, I was going to hell. And uh, I was angry at God because... Uh, um, I was just angry that all these people around me were, were going to hell. And uh, But on June 8, 2015, uh, I came home from work and I had plans to open my Bible and take notes and follow along with Les Feldick's pro program. But instead I came home and got fast food and sat in front of the TV and played video games for two hours or more. And uh, after a couple hours I just turned the game off and just... You know, I was sick with sick with myself and looked over at my Bible sitting on the table and you know never had opened the thing up and um, you know this whole time just realizing you know I'm putting off something I'm putting off something that needs to be done and uh, I just remember going into the kitchen and just you know I prayed to God and I and all this time of studying the Bible and things I never prayed one time <laughs> I mean I I did not know how to pray I didn't I didn't even know if God would hear my prayer, and um, but I went back into my kitchen and just uh, actually right behind me in the video here, and uh, my wife was working late, and I mean I just I prayed to God and just broke down. I mean I don't cry hardly ever, <laughs> and I was crying, and uh, just admitted to him, you know I'm I'm going to hell, you know, just, you know, and I deserve it. I deserve to go to hell, and. Uh, just apologize for you know the last month or however long it was of rejecting Jesus Christ and even though I was learning stuff about him but I just wouldn't accept him and I just remember praying and just saying you know I don't care what it's what it's gonna cost me you know I don't care if I if it kills me I don't care if my marriage falls apart at this point uh, the only thing that mattered to me at that second was getting saved and uh, your salvation is the number one most important thing in your life. Um, as much as you might love your parents or your children or your brother or your sister or your boss or whoever, um, there's nothing more important than your salvation. And it doesn't matter what other people think. I mean, it's your decision. It's your life. And I came to that conclusion. It's just like, 
you know. I knew it was going to make things difficult with my wife, and but I just said, I don't care anymore. And uh, I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I stopped trusting in myself and um, my own self-righteousness, and I got saved. And, I mean, it was just like this weight just went right off of me. I mean, for the last month, I'd just been walking around, and uh, I drive on the interstate to get to my work, and I just remember thinking, you know, any second, you know, a car could come across the median and just hit me, and I could be in hell in two seconds. And that, that you know, that burden was just off me at that moment. And, um, and I put my faith in... Jesus Christ, he shed his blood on the cross for me, he shed his blood on the cross for you too. And um, until you put your faith and your trust in that and call on him for salvation, um, your baptism won't do it, and uh, your church membership won't do it, and uh, your good works won't do it. And unfortunately, those three things a lot of people put their trust in, and that's not salvation. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And... Uh, but like I said, it was just, this weight was just off of me, you know, I mean, it was just un unbelievable. And it's just amazing how, in the weeks after that, I mean, two, three weeks after that, how much of the Bible I was able to learn. I mean, it was unbelievable, you know, I'd spent probably the past six months before that just kind of studying maybe two or three hours a week. And uh, learning little bits here and there, but as soon as I, as soon as I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and prayed to Him and and got saved and got born again I mean it was like a light switch and I mean stuff in the Bible just started I mean I was three four hours a day at, at least just uh, learning as much as I could and um, after I got saved um, you know all new Christian all new Christians make their dumb mistakes and one of the dumb mistakes I made was uh, thinking that uh, contemporary Christian music rock music is is Christian uh, to me, it was a big difference. I mean, the music I was listening to was just horrible. I mean, it was... Uh, I was ashamed of it. You know, I enjoyed it for some, My flesh liked it, you know, for whatever reason. But, man, I, I was just ashamed that I liked that music. And, um, but I remember when I first got saved, I downloaded some, you know, Michael W. Smith and uh, people like that music. And my wife got in the car with me one day, the first day that I played that music. She got in the car and she gave me this look like, who are you? <laughs> I mean, she, she looked at me and she was like, what happened to you? And uh, I'll never forget that. That was one of the funniest things ever. I mean, it was awkward. Like I said, I don't like confrontation. I knew it was going to be a thing. But I just, you know, wasn't going to hide, you know, who I was anymore. And, uh, um, but, uh. I just remember after I got saved every single day, two, three times a day, praying that the Lord would open my wife's eyes and, and help her to get things figured out if she was saved or if she um, was a false convert, which I thought she was. And uh, six months later, and it was a long six months, <laughs> um, I didn't really force anything on her or nothing. I just uh, would try and show her some Bible studies and some sermons and things I thought she might find interesting, and um, at first she was very, you know, very against uh, some of it. I mean, she was a professing Christian, but a lot of it she just didn't want to deal with. But uh, six months later, I came home from work one day, and I could just—I took one look at her, and I knew something was different about her. And I thought she was mad at me. I mean, I knew something was going on, and I thought she was mad at me because she was just really quiet and just. So you could tell there was something going on. And we ate dinner basically in silence, except I asked her about 10 times what, you know, what was wrong. And uh, after dinner, she sat me down on the couch and she just started crying and said that, you know, she had come to the conclusion that day that she was lost and she never knew it. She thought she was saved that whole time. And um, she said she got saved that day. And I, like I said, I could tell. I knew something was different about her. And uh, just like her, or just like me, she had the same thing kind of happen with the Bible where before she got saved, she would she was trying to read a little bit of it here and there and just, you know, really struggling with it. And then after she got saved, I mean, just stuff just started opening up to her like it did to me. It's just amazing. And, uh, and that's all through the, the King James Bible. I mean, it's 
she was a NIV user for years and years, you know, not really a user, just a carrier. She would carry it with her to church and kind of follow along at church. That was about it. But, um, I mean, there's something about this, this book, this King James Bible. I, I, um, people get mad at me on YouTube and they, you know, say I'm worshiping this book and, and I'm a heretic for saying that God could give us a perfect book. Um, I'm standing by this book. I mean, even if this thing's not perfect, it's definitely the one you should use. Uh, I believe it's perfect. I don't think there's an error in this book. Um, and uh, I think these new versions are just totally wicked and disgusting. And uh, my wife's come to that same conclusion. But that's my testimony. And uh, I hope it helps somebody out there. Um, me and my wife kind of had different uh, kind of angles how we came about things. Uh, I came from kind of the non-religious, kind of agnostic side, and she came from the, you know, the, the religious, you know, professing Christian side. And uh, both of us got saved. And I don't know what your story is if you're out there watching this video, but uh, uh, the most important thing to realize is that God created you. You didn't happen by accident. And 100% uh, of the people in the past have died, except for one person in the Old Testament, and that was Enoch. But every other person, of all the billions of people that have been born in this world, all of them have died. And you're going to die one day. And um, you can take your chances, uh, believe in whatever you want to believe, but uh, there's a book out here that says that you're a sinner in God's eyes, and God created you. And um, there's something you have to do to be reconciled to God. And your good works aren't going to do it. Your baptism won't do it. Your church membership's not going to do it. And uh, the only way you're going to make it to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it took me over six months to find that. From starting to read the Bible till I got saved was over six months. And um, I pray if you're searching for the truth that it won't take you six months. And um, I just hope this video is a blessing to somebody out there. Um, and maybe somebody will will wake up and uh, and... Uh, go out and buy a Bible like I did and start searching through it. But um, if anybody has any questions for me in the comments of what I believe and why I believe it and things, I I would love to have a conversation with people about it. So uh, thank you for watching this video and God bless you.